Okay, I'm on the Silver and Black Pride website, and I gotta react to this. Seeing as how Skip Bayless, once again, got pushed around by horse mouth. Charles Woodson, I mean, yeah, Charles Woodson, Rod Woodson. Was Rod Woodson the, um, the uh, wide receivers coach of the Raiders? Hmm. He wasn't, he didn't have anything to do with the secondary, right? That was historically bad. He, he wasn't that coach, right? He was not the coach when the Raiders had the worst statistics in relation to interceptions in the history of the game. They took 10 games. To get their first interception. He wasn't the coach, right? If I was Skip Bayless, because it's not going to come out of his mouth. He should just turn to him and said, You fucking ignorant son of a bitch. You know, he's trying to act like he's not um, full of sour grapes. Just listen to him. Michael Crabtree, he says, is way better than Jordy Nelson. I don't think so. There's a reason why Jordy Nelson was brought in. Jordy Nelson can still catch a pass. Jordy Nelson is faster than Crabtree. Jordy Nelson doesn't wear women's jewelry on the football field. Why are they wearing gold chains? Remember, Horsemouth, he defended them for wearing a gold chain. He just said that I would, I would not wear. I, anybody, anybody take my gold chain? No, 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 that shit ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Gold chain. You don't wear gold chains on the field. It's a football game. This guy is ungrateful. Let's play it. Let's play it and then... I've already listened to it once. I probably should just play it at first. Who gives a fuck? And hear this schmuck. Hear the other schmuck. Hear Bayless do his. I'm gonna nod my head. Mm -mm -mm. He used to be more confrontational. When it was Stephen A. Jackson, he would be more confrontational with him. He's afraid of uh, horse face there. Where's Bill Romanowski to break his elbow again? Mm. Rod, will Gruden work in Oakland? I, I'm, I don't want to sound like a scorn lover. Because mm, <laughs> I was is. fired by the Raiders. <laughs> I love Mark Davis. I love the Davis family. But Not you that can't much. tell me you got rid of Michael Crabtree and you get put Jordy Nelson in there and Jordy Nelson's better than Michael Crabtree. Mm. That's a lie. Mm. And How is that a lie? Let's just stop it. How is that a fucking lie? Michael Crabtree got a contract ext contract extension at the end of 2015. Yes, he put up big numbers in 2016, but he also led the league, supposedly locked jaw hands, Crabtree, led the league in uh, drop passes. How is that possible if he's so much better? Do you know how many passes, uh, uh, what's his name? Drop last year, Jordy Nelson. Zip. And I love Derek Carr. Derek Carr is not Aaron Rodgers. All right, so that's completely different. You can't tell me you bring in Doug Martin and they're a better football team. What are those two players? He's seen this today, right? This is all he's got in his head.
Derek Carr is not Aaron Rodgers. Well, certain things he can do that Aaron Rodgers can't do, I think. For one thing, he's younger. Mm. Now oh, and in uh, Martin or whatever, he was brought in with a minimum contract. He's just another another horse. He might not even make the team. Remember they brought in, was it Michael Bush? I can't remember the guy's name. I'm not going to be able to remember the guy's name. He was a running back. Came in, said he lost weight, said he's going to compete, and he didn't even make the team. They had to eat his salary. But he could be that. You never know. Now, I understand Gruden is wonderful in, on his, in his TV gig. He did a lot of great things as a coach, but he only won 53% of his games. <laughs> he only won 53% of his games, not what the rate is. The rate is he won, yes, the first two years, that's out, 50%, 8 and 8. Although, the second year, 8 and 8, the reason they lost so many games is they missed so many field goals. No one remembers that? Because the next year, they select Janikowski, I believe. And, well, he missed field goal because he was a head case. But it really... The real problem I thought back then was, yes, I was looking at some of those kickers. They brought in a couple different ones, kept on missing, but it was the long snapper. I believe, I'd have to go back and research it, but the Raiders had a long slap snapper, a veteran, either retire or get cut or something, I don't know. And they had instability at that position and it caused problems. They went 8-8 eight eight that year because of that. There's lots of reasons why teams sometimes don't do too well. But Gruden turned it around after that. It's a short-lived uh, you know, journey or whatever because Al Davis and him were at each other's throats. But that's because they were both opinionated. They both had ideas about things. And I don't see too many players coming out right now and saying they want to play for Rod Woodson. But Jerry Rice said if <laughs> he's how old, how old is he? 50? I don't know how old he is. But he said if Gruden called him up, he would, he would show up. I think Gruden could get Megatron out of retirement. I don't know how good that would be or Jerry Rice, but... Um, there's a lot of people who would play with Gruden, including these younger players, including Derek Carr. He said it. He wants to be pushed. I think he does. Derek Carr grew up in, in a different uh, environment than most quarterbacks. That includes Aaron Rodgers. He grew up watching film when he was like 12 years old. No kid does that. You play video games or something, you don't watch film. Ten years, Shay. A hundred million dollars. <laughs> I'm hoping Mark Davis had some outs. Because mm. my question would be, how many Super Bowls do you have to win for a hundred million dollars? Mm. Yeah. You give that deal to a Bill Belichick. Absolutely. But to a to a John Gruden? Yeah, he gives it to a Bill Belichick. I mean, that tells you just how much uh, he was... Um, Put uh, dedicated to his own job as the Raiders uh, coach. He was the wide receivers coach, right? He was the head coach? He wasn't the defensive back. Don't tell me he was the defensive back coach. We had anything to do with the defensive backs. Because they were the worst in the history of the game. So, I hope he wasn't that coach. I, I just, it's hard for me to understand. And then, he's making a lot of moves. I get it. But those two moves... Crabtree was the, he was the 
the glue to that offense because he gave them a backbone. He gave them toughness. Mm -hmm. Jordy Nelson's not going to give them that. <laughs> he gave them toughness. He couldn't even catch a ball in the cold weather. He dropped how many passes last year? The, the official statistics say like he dropped five or six, but I think it was like more like 50. Compared to some of the catches he made in 2015, he dropped a lot of passes after he got paid. He didn't care anymore. He's more concerned about his jewelry. He had a jewelry injury. It cost him two games. He missed two games because of a jewelry injury. Didn't Jordy Nelson play with uh, either bruised or cracked ribs? All you heard from uh, Downing last year about this time, talking about in reflection of the season before, because the Raiders don't talk about injuries ever, is, oh, my God, Crabtree had a, he had a pinky problem or something. He had like a, uh, he had some sort of hand problem. That's the excuse. And that's why he was dropping passes. Bullshit. And <laughs> Nels is a hell of a lot tougher than uh, Crabtree will ever be. Getting a fight with Khalib Talib or whatever and costing your team um, so much is not, it doesn't mean you're tough. It doesn't mean anything. Getting in fights, getting in pen getting penalties and stuff doesn't mean you're tough. You know what makes you tough? Preparation. What did what did David Carr say? Relating what Derek Carr, his brother, no doubt told him. And also he sat in at some of the um the wide receiver meetings. He said there was no leadership. You know what tough this is? It's leadership. Jordy Nelson is the number one receiver on the Raiders. Rod Woodson can go fuck off. Derek Carr's not going to give him that. Now, Marshawn Lynch, he could. <laughs> Derek Carr's not going to give him that. Well, yeah, when your whole team lays down and just allows you to get killed because of anthem protest, I think that's all going to stop. Because of Gruden. He's getting rid of guys. And he doesn't want any of that crap. We know why Marshawn Lynch sits on the uh, thing. Because he never did. When he came into the league. They didn't have the anthem. They didn't bring the players out for the anthem. They played the anthem. And then the players came out afterwards. Which I believe is what they're going to do now. So you're not going to have any of that crap anymore. But I... I would think that he's going to be a little different with Del Rio, who want to just be, okay, yeah, we'll just have to agree to disagree. You know, that that was his attitude. But I don't think that's going to be the case with John Gruden. He's John Gruden is going to demand commitment to excellence. Commitment to, commitment to excellence has nothing to do with just, oh, yeah, just win, baby. That's all we have to say, and we win. No. He wants to see it. If he's not seeing it, you're not playing. Sorry, you're not playing. The Derek Hobb might not be this, the toughest uh, quarterback right now. But I think he's going to become. I mean, he's got this reputation as being some Bible thumper, Jesus boy. But <clears throat> he said it himself. He was not that way not too long ago. Going back to early college, I think. So, we'll just see how tough he gets. Because I, I guarantee Gruden is going to make him much tougher. Guaranteed. Could give him that if he's there, if he's playing the whole game. I'm not, who, I don't know with, with that. But John Gruden itself. 53% of the game, he never took that team 
to an AFC Championship game when he was coach there. He never took him to a Super Bowl. Yeah, when he did go him. to Tampa, we beat him. Remember, we beat him that year in the champ in, in champ championship game. game. Yes, sir, in the championship game, yeah. the, uh, the Super Bowl. in, in two thousand, yeah, two thousand. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to the Super Bowl and he wins the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right. With <laughs> did you hear what he just said? Because I believe wasn't Woodson on the Ravens. And it was from Pittsburgh. Was he on the Ravens, that team? We beat him? Was he just saying, well, Horsemouth is just saying, we mean in the Ravens. I mean, do I have to look it up? I'm going to have to look it up because I can't remember his whole career. I thought he joined the Ravens at some time. Could be wrong. Yeah. We beat him. That would have been. I think it was 2000. No, it was two. Yeah. Well. Yeah, 2000, I think. Wasn't it? Playoff appearances. Where's the glossary? See that little symbol. But whatever. He played for them. <laughs> oh. And he can't remember they took him there. And his probably idea of toughness was Saragusa crushing uh Rich Gannon. They were playing with Arguably the worst quarterback that ever won a Super Bowl. Tony Dungy's team. Yeah. So Tony Dungy's team. Here, the, here we go again. All these black announcers want to give all this credit to Tony Dungy. Tony Dungy did everything. He didn't do jack shit. They were still the Yuccaneers. You can change their uniforms, but they were still the Yuccaneers until Gruden... Um, had a rather easy task. He had the he had the Raiders whole playbook. Nothing was changed. He was playing his own team. It was the following year. I mean, is that ridiculous or what? Everyone forgets that. Tony Dungy didn't do anything. John Gruden. He lost all those draft picks because they traded for a superstar. But he's not losing draft picks right now. He's going into a very good situation. A team that just won 12 games. Could have won more had Derek Cobb been handled better. I mean, there's other, there's other announcers that happen to be white say that it's Tony Dungy's teams. But it's right now the media universally has turned on John Gruden like they've turned on Donald Trump. They used to love Donald Trump. I'm not saying sports. Well, partly. He's, he was always around, you know, gambling casinos and boxing events. And all of a sudden the media... Just turned on a dime on him. And everyone hates him now. <laughs> they loved him before. Just hypocrites. This guy's a hypocrite. Because he lost his job. Mark Davis is not the type to come out and uh, say something either. John Gruden might say something. Like he wasn't qualified. He wasn't. Just because you are a good player doesn't mean you're qualified to be a coach. In fact, it's rarely the case. So my question is, is how many times you, how many Super Bowls do you have to win if you're John Gruden for Mark Davis? To justify that. To justify that hundred million dollars. So when you heard the news that John Gruden had been hired and you didn't even know the money yet, 
What was your first reaction? Were you angry? No. I, I was I was surprised about the money. Mm. I wasn't I mean, who I don't you know, it doesn't really matter about who's going to be the coach. Every every coach has a different style of coaching. He's going to be he said he's going to take it back to 1998. Good luck with that. Good luck to that cuz these these guys are millennials. Yeah. Millennials work, but they want to work so hard. So it's a little different out there nowadays. Um, and maybe he's maybe he is that guy. Maybe he will turn it around. Maybe the second time around or third time around is a charm for him. And coming back for the second time around with the Raiders. I'm not really sure, but I just think the $100 million, I'm hoping Mark Davis had some outs where if they're not playing a certain way in five years, that he, he doesn't have to pay him another $50 million. That's mm. if, for me, I don't think, I don't think it's going to work, Skip. I've been abundantly clear. I think the game has passed him by. Uh, you saw the last couple of years he was in Tampa, he wasn't even making the playoffs. That was a re- There's a reason why most times you don't get a John Madden. John Madden left, still at the top of his game, to go into the booth. That's not why John, Gr- John Gruden went to the booth. He got fired. Now, I knew he was coming back, Skip, because you and I both knew, knew what he was making. For you to leave that cushy gig and to come back in coaching where it's a year-round job, Oh, they're going to have to give you, you know, at least 20%, 30% of what you're making there. Because mm. now you become a full-time employee as opposed to just working the six months out of the year. Yeah, you're looking at tape. That's a whole different ball game, Skip. The guys are different now. Everybody, even offensive linemen, think they're a brand. Mm. Everybody thinks they're a brand. Everybody got Instagram. Everybody got Twitter. Everybody want followers and likes. It is a different game, John Gruden, than the one you left. Mm. And if you think you can go back even... 10 years after you, before you left, when you started coaching 1998, mm-hmm. that's not going to happen, Skip. This is a different time. He needs to evolve. And I just, I just think too much time has passed him by for him to evolve. Because remember, he says he's taking it back to 98 because that's what he knows. Mm. Rod, we'll- okay. Um, He's pointing out there's no takes on, you know, Skip Bayless. And I'm sure there's more to this. The segment is longer than this. But these guys are ridiculous. They don't know what's going to happen. Just look at when he was introduced. The media circus. Then he goes to the Combine. And he is a rock star at the Combine. When John Gruden talks to football players, they're going to listen. As Chris Carter, someone who has had good hands as a receiver, starts talking about... John Gruden hasn't... The game hasn't gone by the point of X's and O's. He knows. He still knows uh, how to coach. These guys are talking like he's got to babysit a bunch of kids. Like they're not going to be able to adjust to him. I don't think so. I don't think so. Even if they draft someone that's 19 years old, he's going to be required to grow up very quickly. John Cruden is going to lay it down and lay it down hard. And I think they're going to follow him at the Pied Piper. Just like they did the first time. There's a big difference between the the Raiders and the Buccaneers. As far as just the, um, the whole tradition the Raiders have been in a very buccaneer, yuccaneer type of slump. But to, to compare the two situations, or now the third situation, which is now, compare the two to now is ridiculous. The Raiders were, were never a bad team. Al Davis wouldn't allow it. So finally they came to a crash. 
and players stabbed him in the back because he it it was a different atmosphere back then. Al Davis was very much involved. He was the head coach, even when Gruden was the head coach. And he would interfere with certain things. Before Gruden was brought in, I believe it was after Bugle, if I remember right. And Bugle was the player all the players on the Raiders wanted, if I remember. Or was that later? I, I can't even remember. Raiders head coaches. I have to look it up. It's hard to remember. But I remember the players, um, they wanted, I mean, they stabbed people in the back. <laughs> this bugle corpse. I don't even know how to spell his name. Joe Bugle. He's going to get it one of these times. Now this guy was, he was famous for, um, if I'm, yeah, I'm right, 97, it's right before Gruden. This guy was famous for the Washington Redskins, offensive line coach, the Hogs. And he was brought in, and he was very popular, nice guy, and they stabbed him in the back. Really bad. They want him. They went to Davis. People went to Davis and said, "We want him." And this is when Jeff George was quarterback. He had actually a good year. The Raiders had some problems. They back then they had problems with the uh, field goals. They had a lot of close games. I don't know if this breaks it down. One of the other website. They had a lot of close games back then. No. And Jeff George put up a good, great season. Almost 4,000 yards back then. That was a lot. It was a little different era. It's not like today. They allow the receivers to get away with anything. Which he wouldn't have survived. Rod Woodson would not be able to survive today's NFL. <laughs> That's a fact. They were able to do way more things on the Ravens, Pittsburgh, than they could do nowadays. But nothing has even been done yet. We have not played one game. And these, I guess you'd call them haters, have come out of the woodworks universally to criticize him. Wait till they find out he voted for Trump. Highly possible. But I think he's going to meet Trump next year in the White House. When the Raiders go to visit. <laughs> yeah. Just win, baby. This guy was the wide receivers head coach, right? For the Raiders? Let's go back. He, he was the wide receiver coach. I have to make sure that that is true. Because you can't tell me. He was the quarterback coach, right? You're not going to tell me. Uh-oh. He <laughs> says still present. This guy was the cornerback coach? Rod Woodson is criticizing John Gruden for 53%. Uh, a winning percentage. But he's got, he, let's look it up, 2017, 
raid is pass defense. She give us some stories. Rob Woodson. This is uh, the total. The microphone in front of my eye. 26. It was much lower than this at one time. 26 isn't too bad. Trouble is, there's not 100 teams. <laughs> uh, Pagano had a lot to do with that. And Bowman which now they should sign, where I saw the other bad news that Sue is not visiting, asshole. I was looking for a story. It's going to be too much. Crap. Used to be search engines actually followed what you wrote, but now they pick out certain phrases. They, you see how they're highlighting raid is? Now I could put this in parentheses. Got one. I don't like the search. But they, they took 10 games to get um, the first, yeah, through 14 games. They improved in the last couple games. Let's read his wire. Are you in? No. Thanks. Hey. Worst defense in NFL against the pass through 14, week 14. This is going on Rod Woodson's new resume. The secret is out. The Raiders are bad at football and have been especially atrocious in coverage in 2017. They're allowing quarterbacks a pass rating of 105.3. To drive this home, the Browns had um, 103.9. They're better. This guy, like, writes... Basically writes Twitter type articles. They run out of space real fast, I think. Unless he just fills it up with all this spam. <laughs> yeah, their first two picks didn't play. I guess that is what Rod Woodson will use in the, as an excuse. He's criticizing John Gruden. Yet he had the worst pass defense in football through 14 weeks. And also was historically bad. Because one thing we left out is, I think I could be able to find this. Record set and bad, this will show me. <clears throat> we didn't want that. I don't want an invitation to the whole wide world. The Raiders of the first team in NFL history with zero defense 
defensive interceptions through the first nine games of the season. The first team. And <laughs> is anyone going to beat that? Because they go, they, <laughs> this article is a little late. They go to 10. <laughs> Rod Woodson, wide receiver coach. Oh, I, is, is he the? Oh, he was the cornerback coach. He's the cornerback coach, and he's going to criticize Gruden's record. Really, <laughs> he set a record. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records now, <laughs> as the worst cornerback coach in the history of the game. <laughs> oh, you cannot make this stuff up. What a schlep. 